Hello and welcome back to Flora and the Novice Explorers. In today's video, we're going to revisit an old um, series of ours called Camper Van Essentials. Now, it's been a while since we updated the playlist. I think it was about November 2019. Yeah. So it's definitely time that we review some new gear. The Rufus can't wait. Calm down, it's all right. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's exciting stuff. So today we are taking a look at what could be, in our opinion, the easiest way of getting power off grid. That's right, whether you're in a motorhome, caravan, you're in a tent, you're full time in it, or maybe you're just a weekend warrior, this could be a very, very viable option. Yes, but is it the right option for you? Well, that's what we hope to answer in this video, or at least make it a little bit clearer. So Jackery have kindly sent us their Explorer 240 portable power station and also the Solar Saga 100 watt solar panel. If you're an avid viewer of other van life channels or subscribe to some overlanding or camping content, then you've probably seen quite a few videos over the last couple of months that include Jackery products. This might lead you to believe that Jackery are a brand new company just starting out. However, Jackery was founded in 2012 by a former Apple battery engineer. Since then, they have launched their first lithium portable power station in 2015 and then released their high efficiency solar panels in 2018. So they have quite a few years of experience and development behind them. The reason you may be seeing so much of Jackery right now is that they have only just recently brought their products to the UK. And as a way to introduce the brand, they've placed the equipment in the hands of outdoor enthusiasts and digital nomads to put the portable power products to the test. Full disclosure, before we get into the meaty bit of the video, we just want to let you know that Jackery have sent us this product to review. We have not paid for this product, neither are they paying us to say nice words. That's right, so from here on out, all the opinions expressed are truly our own. Um, there's nothing we have to say particularly, so we're just going to put the Jackery to the test and tell you what we think about it. Honest review from yours truly. We've had the equipment now for a few weeks, so Cal's had plenty of time to test it out and put it through its paces. That's right, so this video is going to be as thorough as we can make it. It might be slightly long, so if there's a particular part you want to see, like the unboxing, maybe our final thoughts, the cost, we'll timestamp those all down below, so there should be individual chapters for this video. But if you want the full rounded experience, then please just watch it start to end and enjoy. So without further ado, let's get to the unboxing. The Explorer 240 came in a well-designed box with some great imagery and all of the basic info you'd want to know if you saw it on a shelf. We'll be expanding on this later. Also included with the Explorer power station was a soft bag containing the UK mains adapter and a 12 volt cigarette lighter socket too. The unit was protected by a generous amount of polystyrene which meant it was tightly packed within the box to help avoid damage during transit. You also get the obligatory instruction booklet, a cool little power station shaped business card with all their social and contact info, and most importantly you'll find the Jackery warranty card. This offers a 24 month limited warranty and lifetime technical support. The Solar Saga panel came in its own cardboard box and the panel inside was encased in bubble wrap. There wasn't anything else in the way of extra protection, but it arrived safe and sound regardless. So now it's out of the box, what are our first impressions? What do you reckon, Maggie? So first thing, Bosch is the colouring and the branding. I think yeah. it looks really nice. I think they've paid quite a lot of attention to that and I think it's paid off, so thumbs up Jackery for that. The overall aesthetic is really good, spot on. It doesn't look like um, a cheap bit of gear really, yeah, does it? It looks yeah. smart and well thought about, which sort of gives you that bit more confidence. 
Yeah, and then we started using it and it's nice and weighty. It doesn't feel flimsy. It's well yeah. put together. I think they've used premium, um, what would you call it? Materials yeah. all around everything. Like the plastic feels good. I don't think it's going to get scratched or marked too easy. You know, these products are designed to be taken everywhere and travel with you. And I think they'll stand the test of time, at least from what we've experienced. Yeah. Uh, the buttons feel nice. It's a bit feedback and they've also got um, little LEDs as well to indicate whether they're on or off so you can visu visually just push see if you've um, switched it on or not and yeah just the overall look is really good same with this solar panel um, as soon as we got that out it's got this very firm and robust feel to it yeah considering it's a foldable solar panel at first I thought I've never experienced them before so I was like are they can they withstand you know, you'd think that they might be more fragile because there's, I, I imagine there's elements of glass to it, but that feels really good. I love the way that the um, it all folds together. There's a little um, magnetic catch which yeah. keeps it together, so it's not just flopping open all the time. That's and it. and the more you use them, the more little um, features and little things you realise. So make it about the magnetic clasp, and also you've got the uh, Velcro folding legs on the back of the panel, so you just go bish bosh, lean it back, and it's in position. Um, the little zippy bag on the side is really nice with the cable and yeah so far everything feels really good um, all positive yeah and one of the uh, it's called the Explorer which we are Flora and the novice explorers so it's made for us yeah and we I really like that element of it that it's like <laughs> yep we'll have you you belong with us now Explorer so we've already talked about a couple of features we've noticed on the Jackery products, but let's take a bit of a deeper dive and discuss its full array of features. So let's start with the features of the Explorer 240. Now we're going to do our best to make this as understandable as possible if you're not very familiar with electronical stuff. There's going to be a bit of jargon, a few acronyms coming up. If you're unclear about anything, please feel free to ask us a question down below in the comments section and we'll endeavour to answer as clearly as we can. But yeah, let's uh, let's see what this little beauty. Be 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 <laughs> but let's see what this little beauty can do. So you have a built-in 240 watt-hour lithium-ion battery pack, which is 16.8 amp hours. You have a 200 watt continuous pure sine wave inverter with a 400 watt surge peak. There are four outputs consisting of two USB Type A ports, one UK mains outlet, and a 12 volt DC outlet too all of which can be used simultaneously. The Explorer has a single input for charging. Here you can plug in the Solar Saga solar panels, or you can use the supplied mains charger, or even the 12 volt cigarette lighter socket in your car. It includes MPPT solar charge technology. This will maximize the uh, power coming from the sun. The smart display shows you the input and output power and the remaining percentage of battery. And as we mentioned before, there are LED lights on the switches to indicate whether the output is switched on or off. And now let's move on to the 100 watt Solar Saga portable panel. The foldable solar panel plugs directly into the Explorer with a generous 3 metre cable. There are magnetic clasps to keep it in the stowaway position. Foldable legs that allow a quick and easy setup. And a handy built in pocket keeps the cables tidy. An additional USB C and USB Type A output can charge your phone or device directly from the solar panel. It has a sleek and sturdy design, perfect for storing and packing away and there are eyelets for tie downs, pegs or suspension if you should need it. So now let's talk about how portable this kit really is. After all, that's one of its major advantages. Compared to the electrical system in our van, it's tiny. Yeah, and I think that's one of the biggest positives about this kit. Yep, the Explorer 240 will easily fit into most camper van cupboards or the boot of your car with ease. And because the uh, solar panel folds directly in half, as long as you've got somewhere nice to either slide it down the side or on top, you know, it can go a lot of places. Just be careful, probably not to put too much weight on top of it. Yeah, it says very clearly, do not bend. Yes, which I think is a given, but you never know. <laughs> 
the Explorer Portable Power Station weighs in at around 3 kilograms. It measures 23 centimetres in length, 19.3 centimetres in height, and has a depth of 13.2 centimetres, give or take. And the Solar Saga 100 watt panel is a little weightier at around 4.7 kilos. When unfolded, the panel measures 122 centimetres long and 53.3 in height. The panel folds directly in half and has an overall thickness of only 3.5 centimetres, making it easy to stow away when not in use. So with a combined weight of 7.7 .7 kilos, it is pretty compact and easy to manoeuvre for a short distance for the average person. That's it, usually you get to your campsite pitch or you park up and you'll probably just pop this outside the door, job done. But what if you wanted to go a little further afield? You know, what if you wanted to take the Explorer 240 truly off grid? Someone's had a little bit too much time on their hands, so Cal's put it to the test and here is the epic montage of his time with the Explorer 240. So it might be that I'm more familiar with electric gadgets, batteries, solar panels and that type of thing, or possibly because I'm a typical male, but I have to admit I didn't actually read the instruction booklet before I set this up for the first time. I was a bit too excited and just wanted to see if it works, but I'm happy to report that um, it's very straightforward. I got it working within seconds really, and there's been no issues. But what about people that maybe aren't so familiar with this type of gadgetry and batteries and solar panels and that type of thing? Is it easy enough for them to set it up and just get it working? Well, today I've got the perfect guinea pig to put it to the test in the form of Meg. And probably a little bit of help from Rufus too. This is going to be our first time setting up the panel and the Explorer. Um, and we're going to see if she can get a, a phone charging, aren't we? Yeah. Just, I've never, I, I've never even pressed a button at the moment <laughs> i uh, that's I'm, not me being controlling you just not your thing is it <laughs> no uh, the techie stuff de gets delegated yeah so that's what we're going to do i'm going to hand over the stuff to meg and she's going to go set up in the middle of the field and see how quick and easy it is to get her phone charging ready yeah let's do it
So then, how did you find your first time using the Jackery products? Well, I was very surpri surprised, really. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might have set me up to fail, to oh, be quite would I honest. I do that? Um, because you didn't give me a list of what to do first, what to do next. You never mentioned anything of how to use it all. Mm. And it was super, super easy. I can uh, I can tell you that as soon as you plug the um, you set the pa the uh, solar panel up, you plug it in and it wakes up by itself. Mm -hmm. yep. And then you plug in your USB, press uh, the LED on button, put it in your phone. Bob's your uncle. Done. Yeah. Um, I don't have. We haven't timed how long it took you, but a minute. I don't know. Oh. Going to put it on screen. Yes, we'll time it, but it really doesn't take very long at all. And then packing it away is pretty much exactly the same thing in reverse. Super and easy. Yeah because the portability, the portability of it's just amazing, isn't it? And like, uh, part of you did what I did a couple of times is set the panel the wrong way up, upside down. That's the only thing you've got to remember. <laughs> it, it, when you're doing it, when the camera and drone on on you simultaneously, you don't feel like such a But anyway, but I've been thinking that this is perfect for all of the devices that we use on the road. Yeah. It, it can do all of it. Yeah, so. Two phones, a drone rechargeable batteries, battery banks that we use to charge our phones on hikes and stuff. Two laptops. Two laptops. Uh, we've got USB powered fans and stuff which when it gets very hot we've used a couple times that would have been handy to be able to actually move them about because they've got short USB cables don't they so yeah. they, they have to be near our um, permanent installation in the camper van so there's not many things I don't think it couldn't power even our cool box because it's 12 mm, volt yeah. it power that. Um, so I definitely think it's going to be uh, mainstay yeah. for our travels. Yeah. Um, so a couple of questions for you. What I've been thinking privately over there is mm -hmm. what's the maximum um, like thing you can draw off of it? Well the inverter goes up to 200 watts continuous with a 400 watt peak so take for example our editing laptop's a very capable machine it's a very high-end laptop yeah. that only draws 130 watts so that puts into perspective for you. Mm -hmm. um, and I managed to run that the other day. I was outside streaming, uh, streaming a HD video while simultaneously writing the blog for this Jackery. Um, I was outside for a good hour and I only used 10% of the uh, battery, which I was really chuffed about um, because the laptop was full brightness because I was outside and it was on like high performance as well. Um, I wasn't video editing at the time, but I was still, you know, it was still mm. has a fast processor, a lot of RAM, good graphics card and all that sort of stuff. Other cool stats is that it can charge an iPhone 24 times. Mm -hmm. An iPad Air seven and a half times mm -hmm. and a MacBook Pro twice. Yeah, so this is the smallest in the range, I believe, the 240. I think it goes up to maybe 500, then 1,000. Um, but we'll leave all the links down below. But um, I think the 240 is the sort of entry level. But for us, it's perfect. It's a nice compact size that we can fit underneath our bed here with ease. So yeah. very happy with that. Yeah. Just really great really happy that we've got it actually because i think with our solar setup mm. sometimes this was lacking and we were a bit worried about running the two laptops when when we were both away yeah it's definitely an issue i mean yours yours is more like a leapfrog in it so it's not quite as power hungry as mine so yours will probably on the it was only 150 euros <laughs> from a carry for thank you very much but anyway yeah so obviously me and meg only have a certain amount of knowledge um about electrical gadgetry like this. I have a little bit more than Meg, but still I'm very much a beginner. So if you want a deeper dive about what the Jackery products are capable of, I'm going to leave a couple of links in the video description. There's two videos from David McLucky. He's very technical. He's got all the tools and knowledge. He strips one down, puts it to the test and even runs a 12 volt diesel heater off one. Uh, very interesting videos. And there'll be another video also from Julian Lett, who's very technical, has ways of stress testing it and making sure that it lives up to what it promises. Um, so very interesting watch. Again, they will be in the video description down below. So another question for you. How long does it take for the battery pack to charge up to 100%? Um, I haven't done my own tests. I've drained the battery and charged it up, but I've never been strictly timing it. So I'm going off what Jackery states. Um, they say if you're using the 100 watt solar saga panel, the mains adapter or another generator type of um, like a petrol generator. Yeah, to charge it up. You're looking at about five and a half hours, although I hear a lot of people say it generates a bit quicker than that. I suppose it depends on uh, a few different uh, factors, but roughly you're looking at that. And if you want to charge it from your cigarette socket in your car, so in your vehicle, if you're going on a long drive, they say it takes about six and a half hours. 
because it draws a little less power. So when I've plugged it into the mains and on the solar panel, I've noticed a sort of high 60 watt, low 70 watt sort of range. Um, so very capable. Um, and then depending what you're using from the Jackery, that power can last for days if it's just USB lights or camping gear, you know, it depends what you're running on yeah. it. One thing I thought of as well, it's perfect for a festival. Yeah. Sometimes, especially if you've got your mates that rely on you, those little anchor batteries mm. is only going to do a few. Yeah. Whereas you can charge an iPhone 24 times. You could yeah. charge people for it. Yeah. Don't, don't do that, actually. <laughs> Just take it for yourself and enjoy it. So overall, very impressed. Um, it's not a piece of kit that we would have probably assumed we needed. Yeah. Um, I think because we've got our setup and we're content with it and we make it work that we thought that's probably about as far as we need to take it. But actually, yeah. having used this stuff for the last three or four weeks and you sort of figure out, oh, actually, I can do this now. I can go into the middle of the field and use the laptop without uh, fear of it running out of its own battery. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. And I think as well for, for, for newbies and total beginners and people that aren't content with doing their own electrics in their van, this could be all you need if you had a similar electrical... Um, Requirements. Requirements as us, yeah. yeah. So a laptop, a phone or two, mm -hmm. you know, it could power the lights if you had USB fairy lights. Yeah. It could do it could do for someone that was maybe like a single person or, or kept it small or even definitely. boost it up to the bigger the bigger battery bank. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Very very viable option, I think, for um, van life and camping in general. So we've definitely discussed all the things we love about the Jackery products. However, that doesn't mean they're exactly perfect. There are a few flaws or little nitpicks that we have. Um, the first one, possibility you guys have picked up on it as well, is the placement of the UK plug on the inverter. As you can see, it's right at the bottom of the unit, which is fine, generally. However, a lot of the UK plugs obviously have their flex that come vertically out of the plug, which means if you've got a lot of flex or if it's a big plug, it's going to be touching the floor. Or even the, um, uh, the camera ch battery charger. It's got an overhang of about that much, so it needs to be jacked up on something on a bench on the side of the van where it can something can hang below, which I think is a little bit of a uh, design oversight, but if we think that this was created originally in the USA, where the plugs come straight out from the middle. Yeah. They haven't had to think about UK plugs until now. Yeah. I mean, it's not a deal breaker. Like Meg said, you prop it up on something a bit uh, higher or lean it back slightly, and generally it's absolutely fine. It's just something that we noticed and could be uh, remedied with maybe just swiveling the plug 90 degrees, uh, if that works, or 45 degrees. Either or. 90 degrees, I 40 think. Deg 40 degree, 45 degrees would be on um, the side or just flip No, it. 90 would be on the side. 180 would be right up. So 45 would um, be in. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go for 90, Let's shall we? 90. Um, so there's that. Another thing which I've noticed, I know we've mentioned them a couple times in this video, is the illuminated LEDs on the button. These are fantastic. However, in direct sunlight, they can be tricky to see if they're on. Um, you often have to like just give them a little bit of shade. So they are good, but if you're in the broad daylight, then a little, a little tricky. Kind of see. when you're going to be making the solar. Yeah. yeah. But another plus point, I know this is technically the cons or flaws, but another plus point is the screen, um, even in the harshest of sun, is really, really easy to read mm. somehow. Um, so that's brilliant. That's kind of all you need to know anyway. Yeah. So one thing that you've told me mm. is that this if you leave it turned on, but nothing plugged in, it can draw 10 watts-ish. That's true, but that's only on the inverter side. Oh, okay, so, so the plug side. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of to be expected, you know, using the inverter does use power. So to test this, I left um, that empty, nothing plugged in, but it was switched on, and you can see that the, the uh, output is around 10 watts, like Meg said. So I thought I'd leave it for a couple of hours and see if there's any automatic shut off feature because the Jackery might realize there's no power being wasted after five, 10 minutes and it shut off. However, after the two hours I tested it for, that wasn't the case. Um, so 10 watts, you know, only a little bit of power, but over time it, it can and will 
drain the battery, um, you'll most likely not leave it on by accident because the fan does kick in intermittently on the inverter when it's plugged in, so you'll hear it. And the LED will show up as well when it's plugged on. Yeah. Plugged in. So um, you probably you probably will notice, and I don't think it's a major issue. Um, if these two are left on though, that doesn't draw any. It's no, just the inverter. One. Just the inverter. I think that's just the nature of the inverter itself. The 12 volt sockets, USBs, I've left them switched on and empty, and there's no power draw that I could tell. So something else which potentially could be a flaw, it isn't for us, and I'll explain why, but for some people it has been, um, and that is the single 8mm DC input. Now this is fine with the Jackery supplied mains, 12 volt and the solar panel cable all fit in there fine, but it's not the most common um, connection type out there I don't think. So if you have a more traditional solar setup with MC4 connectors for example, it might be tricky to get them to connect. So I'd definitely check the devices you've got and how you're intending to charge this. But as we said at the beginning of the video, the product does come with the mains adapters and the 12 volt charger anyway, which are the 8 mil socket, which is fine. So it might be just the solar panels if you've got your own setup. Just check the compatibility before you purchase it and assume that it's just going to fit. <laughs> Another thing to point out, but it's not necessarily a flaw, is that the solar panel isn't waterproof. And to be fair, neither is the power bank. So if it starts to rain whilst you're on camping, just get the gear inside. But I think it's a given, yeah, isn't it's it? It's electrical. Yep, and then finally, this is a very, very, very minor nitpick, but it's just something I saw. We mentioned earlier that there's USB-A and a USB-C output on the solar panel itself. Um, sometimes USB-C comes with a specific protocol called uh, PD power, I think it's like, um, it's basically, basically a way of providing more power to charge specific devices faster. Um, this just doesn't have it. It'll still charge um, any device you plug into it, but it's not gonna have the really sophisticated fast charging option, which is a very minute detail and not really something I would even consider, to be honest. So that's about it. Other than that, just being thorough, really, aren't we? Yeah, trying to be. Hopefully that made sense what I just said, because I'm not sure I wrapped my head around it perfectly, but. As we've said before, we like to do a thorough job on the products that we review. And one thing that we think is very important is to receive reliable advice and support when you need it. That's right. So on a Friday the 30th of April, which just happens to be the start of the bank holiday here in the UK, I sent a message through Jackery's official Facebook page from my personal uh, Facebook. Um, that's how I like to do it because it's easy. You've got a track of conversations and stuff. So I yeah. sent them a genuine question I had. Um, I think I asked, is the uh, Solar Saga panel waterproof? And I just left it at that. I thought, right, we'll see how long it takes. It could be Monday, Tuesday, you know, bank holiday and all that. But to my surprise, we received an answer within four minutes, which I was very shocked by, to be honest. Yeah, which I think that stands you in good stead to receive good customer service. They didn't necessarily know it was you. No, no they, it's not all connected. No, no, it's not not through the floor of Facebook. Just me as a potential punter, I suppose, or even a customer who has the panel. Mm. Genuine question, answer straight away. They said, "Is there anything else you'd like to know?" I said, "No, that's fine." Um, so I was very impressed. That's the only dealings we've had with the sort of technical side. We've had no other uh, problems or issues, so we've had no no need really to um, ask them a lot of questions. But. Um, talking to Jackery, every every interaction has been very courteous and quick. Yeah, so, and it gives us faith that we won't have any problems in the future. Yeah, I'm sure we can just reach out if we do have an issue and it'll probably get resolved pretty quick. So five out of five so far for support. So when it comes to making the decision of what electrical setup you're gonna have in your van, a lot of the time it comes down to cost. What's your budget and how does that little Jackery stand up against other options on the market. As of filming this video right now, I think the Jackery Explorer retails for $259.99 and the Solar Saga panel also retails for $259.99. So you're looking at a combined cost of around £520. However, from the 17th to the 19th of May, they are doing their Jackery Explorer week where they're offering 15% off all their products. So if you use the links down below and you're interested, you could save yourself quite a little bit of money. Fabulous. And putting that into comparison, we spent over £600 with our basic solar setup, and that doesn't include the USB port, the 12 volt socket, the inverter, 
but then also take it into consideration we've got a 255 watt panel and two lots of 100 amp hour batteries. Yeah. So what you gain in capacity I suppose with a, um, a permanent fixture you lose in portability. It's all up to um, what you need really. Yeah. And also one factor is you've actually got to find someone to do it or have the know-how and also safety is a big priority too. Yeah so the Jackery is very simple as Meg and I've demonstrated it's plug and play essentially so job done um, so there is that aspect to it it's just all about your budget what what you are willing to spend what you need yeah um, your electrical needs as well really yeah obviously it's something we all need in this modern day and it just however you approach it is up to you I suppose yeah. and the Jackery compared to similar products on the market we find that they're very competitively priced yeah they, they are very closely matched so if you're looking to take the plunge now, definitely use the links down below that were kindly supplied by Jackery to save yourself a bit of money. Yes. So I think that's it. This has been a big video for us. We haven't done one of these reviews in a while and it's quite a lot of work. Yeah, it's given us a kick up the butt, but also I feel it's got us on a bit more of a roll, hopefully, with video producing. Yes, it's been a while. So once again, a huge thank you to Jackery for supplying their products for review. Um, we hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something and it's helped clear up um, any questions you might have. But if, if there are any more you do have, please leave them in the uh, comments down below and we'll respond to you as soon as we possibly can. Yeah, have you already got a Jackery? Is there something that we've missed? Something that you think it's really useful for? Is there another flaw that we may have missed? Again, stick that down in the comment section below. We'd love to know your thoughts. If you have one, are thinking about getting one? Anything really. And everything else you'll need will be in the video description. There'll be our social links, uh, the links to the videos we mentioned earlier, uh, where they do teardowns of the products that are really good to view. And anything else you might need to know should all be down there. So for now, this is Flora and the Novice Explorers signing off and we shall see you in the next one. We'll see you later. Bye. Come on, Rufus. <laughs>